guys. I hope you enjoyed your breakfast because it's now time for Bible. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a really great story for you today, but um, let's first start off with our pledges as we always do. So please stand with me nice and tall and let's recite the pledge to the um, flag of the United States. Okay. So attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. Good job. Let's say the pledge to the Bible, God's Word. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's Holy Word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide His Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. The B-I-B-L-E song. <laughs> Remain standing and let's recite the pledge to the Christian flag, okay? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Got an old school song for you. <laughs> And now our class song. Um, I just want to 
remind you that um, God really does love us. If you should ever doubt, don't. Remember, because we learned about the armor of God and how we have to get dressed every morning. And one of the things that um, we have to wear is the helmet of salvation. And we have to wear that breastplate of righteousness. Those two pieces of armor protect us from negative thoughts or negative things that come our way. We're not supposed to think on anything negative. We're not even supposed to look at anything negative. We're not even supposed to listen to anything negative. That's how strongly God wants us to um, feel. He wants us to think about hope and the terrific things that are coming our way. He does not want us to think about bad things or negative things. That is the job of the devil. The devil wants us to think negatively and, you know, have sad faces all the time. But that is not God's intent for us. And um, I say all of that to say this, that um, when we um, act up, when we do things we're not supposed to, and especially if we keep doing the same bad things over and over and over, of course that saddens God. And, but it doesn't mean he doesn't love us. It just means that we need a spanking. And he will chasten us. And the Bible tells us not to fear God's chastening because just like your um, mommies and daddies at home, when you get into trouble, they'll put you in time out. They may swat your bottom, whatever the case may be. But God does the same thing. And so in this particular story, um, the Israelites who are, who, um, who are God's chosen people, just kept getting into trouble. And so whenever they got into trouble, God will, would allow, now he would allow their enemies to come in and um, put them in bondage or take over them or treat them really mean. And this happens to be the case in this particular story. So I want you to listen very closely because we're going to talk about a young man named Gideon. And God again, every time, I mean, God just blows my mind. I was like, well, it don't take much to blow my mind <laughs> because I just, I just love the Lord. I love his stories, but um, he is, God is just so awesome. And the things and the methods that God uses, and I'll tell you why he does it in just a moment. You'll find out in the story. Okay, so the Bible story today, we're going to talk about um, is a young man named Gideon. So I want you to listen from the beginning and we're going to um, cut off somewhere um, in the story because we don't have time to go to the whole story. Okay, listen. The story of Gideon starts out with God not being very happy with his people, the Israelites. I just told you that. If you remember, the Israelites were the ones um, that God saved. He saved um, the Israelites from Pharaoh. Remember Moses, the prince of Egypt who watched that movie? Um, he saved them from the Philistines, remember that, okay? Um, he saved um, the three faithful men from Nebuchadnezzar. So God was, God is, he, he loves his kids and he's always willing to rescue us, okay? Hundreds of years have passed, but throughout all of God's miracles they had experienced, they still were doing bad things in the eyes of the Lord. And you know what, boys and girls, that's just like us. You know, God will get us through something, and um, we'll say, thank you, God, thank you so much, we love you. And then all of a sudden, we'll start doing something that's not pleasing to the eyes of God. And then we'll get into trouble, and we'll fall on our knees, and we'll say, God, you know, we messed up again. And we pray, and God hears us, and all of a sudden, he makes things better. And we're like, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And then all of a sudden, we're doing something bad again. I mean, it's a very, very vicious cycle. Um, but the thing is, with God, he gives us all the tools that we need to do what's right. But sometimes we don't. And when we choose not to, like I said, he allows a hardship or something to come into our lives. And then we have to ask him for help. Well, anyway. There were consequences of these actions. That meant that when um, we do something wrong or when they did something wrong, um, God doesn't bless us, but he allows us to be punished. And who likes punishments? I like blessings. All right. So the Midianites, um, 
were not the friends of the Israelites. And let me tell you how mean they were. They took or ruined all the crops and animals of the Israelites. So the Israelites had to run and hide in caves. Oh, wouldn't that be really bad to like take your cows and your goats in a cave with you and you had to sleep with them and smell them? Oh, but that's what they had to do because the Midianites would steal their animals. They would either steal them and take them and eat them, or they would just kill their animals out of being just mean and cruel. They would steal the other, their, um, other food, like their crops and stuff. They were just not very kind. After Israel had nothing left, they finally cried out to God for help. You know what? Why wait until you don't have anything left? Why not say, Lord, uh, uh, immediately, uh, uh, I'm in trouble. Help now. Don't wait until, you know, disaster strikes. Start throwing your lifeline out now. God, help in the middle, okay? But they didn't. Um, God heard their cry, and um, like he always does, God had a plan. He always has a plan to save us, Okay? The cool thing about all this is that God wasn't happy with the Israelites, but he still listened to them and answered their prayers. This is where Gideon comes into the story. He was threshing wheat in a hidden place so that the Midianites would see him and steal the wheat when an angel of the Lord came and sat down beside him. <laughs> okay. The angel spoke to him and said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Okay, let's figure out why he, he's called a mighty warrior. Because I'm getting ready to describe um, Gideon to you. And he doesn't really sound like a mighty warrior to me. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why is all this bad stuff happening? Where are all the miracles that our forefathers told us about? Where is this God? The Lord replied to Gideon, Go with all your strength and save Israel from the Midianites. I am going to say, um, I'm going to send you to do it. Then Gideon started all the excuses. You know what? Sometimes <clears throat> when your parents want you to do something, you're like, But mom, you know, um, I'd rather do this. Mom, I'm too tired. Mom, I want to go outside. Um, mom, I can't write my spelling words three times. Mom, my hand's tired. Mom, my head hurts. Well, Gideon was coming up with the same excuses. You know, why are you going to send me? Go get somebody else to save Israel. Why me? Okay. Um, but Lord, how can I save Israel? Is what he asked. My people are the weakest in the land. And I am the smallest and the youngest in my family. Sounds like excuses to me, right? Yeah. I think probably I think God probably smiled here. You want to know why I think God smiled there? It's because God always uses the most unlikely people. Mrs. Donald, for example, I never thought that I would be teaching school, especially teaching Bible. He uses people that just that are just so unlikely. And he uses those people to bring glory to him. And that's what he's going to do with um, Gideon. Um, I will be with you and you will defeat, and we will defeat the Midianites together. Then Gideon asked God for a sign. Okay, evidently when um, the angel of the Lord came to him, he had some type of disbelief maybe. Okay, he wanted to be sure that this was really God talking to him. Gideon didn't have a Bible like you and I do. We can pick up our Bibles, we can open up our Bibles, and we can read about God. We can read what he wants us to do, how he wants us to live. But back in those days, the Bible had not been written yet like that. So this is a way, um, Gideon didn't have a Bible to follow and didn't know or didn't know how or God went around talking to people he wanted to be sure. First he appeared, he prepared an altar as an offering for God. This was the way they gave gifts and asked God to forgive them. Remember, we talked about that with Cain and Abel, um, Abel, and we talked about that with Jacob and Isaac. They all um, built off um, altars, and they would offer up sacrifices and um, 
and ask God to forgive them for the sins and God would send fire from heaven and would consume the offering and that's how they knew that God had forgiven them. That's exactly what Gideon had done. So he set his offering um, on the altar, meat and unleavened bread down on a rock and fire came from heaven um, and consumed the meat and bread and the Lord and the angel of the Lord disappeared. Then, then Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord who actually appeared before him. That same night, <clears throat> the Lord told Gideon to take down the altar his father had built for a pretend God. Now Gideon's father had built an altar for a false God. And this false God was the name Baal. And so the Lord told Gideon, get rid of that. We don't worship that. You are to worship me. And see, that's the problem that the, media, uh, that the Israelites had all the time. You know, um, they would allow someone in their lives to lead them astray. And that's why I tell you, boys and girls, even though you're little, I tell you all the time, choose your friends wisely. Just, just because said someone says, well, I want to be your friend. Hey, do you believe in Jesus? And if they say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, okay, they can be your friend. But if you say, hey, do you believe in Jesus? Nah, you know, me and my mommy and my daddy, we worship this God. No. No. You play with friends who worship your God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And so that's what Gideon had to do. Gideon had to go find his father's altar because his father worshipped a foreign god, a fake god, because there's only one real one, okay? And um, Gideon had to, just, had to destroy it. And um, so the Israelites had started believing in these fake gods, and that's why God had been angry with them. That's why he allowed the Midianites to come in and just torture them, Okay. He is the only real God and true God, and these people were praying and giving offerings to pieces of wood and statues that couldn't hear them, that couldn't see them, that couldn't answer their prayers, couldn't feed them, couldn't do anything, okay? So Gideon took 10 of his servants at night because he was afraid of getting caught from the people in the town and tore down all of the altars. So not only did he tear down his father's altar to a false god, but he went throughout the town, the city, and removed all of those altars that they used for foreign gods. Woohoo, yay for Gideon. Stand on what you know. Stand on what you believe. The people were mad when they realized Gideon had wrecked their altars, but they didn't. They decided not to harm Gideon because they thought Baal their false god was going to protect him and punish him. That so didn't happen because Baal was a false god. He's not even a god. So Gideon was just, he was cool. <laughs> he didn't have anything to worry about. Okay, Gideon still wanted to make sure that God would save the Israelites. So he asked for another sign. So he placed a piece of wool from a sheep on the ground. Okay, wool, you know what wool is. Okay, it's what we use to make sweaters. Um, but um, when you cut it right off of a sheet, it's like real fuzzy and wiry. If there was any dew on the fleece and all the ground around it was dry, then he knew um, that God would save him. So what he did was he took this wool, okay, and it was probably a pretty good sized piece of wool, and he put it on the ground. And what he did was, um, um, if there was dew on the wool. Okay, if dew means water. So if the wool was wet and all around the, the um, wool, all around the, the, the wool, the ground, if the ground around the wool was dry, then that meant God was with him and God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Well, first of all, why are you questioning God in the first place? God can't lie, won't lie. He always comes through with his promises. We as people, we break promises because stuff just happens. But with God, nothing mysteriously, uh, mysteriously happens because he's in control of everything. But Gideon, you know, he was a worry war. Sometimes like Miss O'Donnell. So he's like, you know what? I'm scared, scared, scared. God, 
just just prove to me one more time. I'm gonna put this wool on the ground, and if the wool is wet and the ground is dry, I know, I know you got my back. Okay. Um, when Gideon checked the wool in the morning, it was soaking wet and the ground was dry. Still, Gideon needed another sign. And that's how it is sometimes, boys and girls. Situations in our life get so scary. For instance, like right now with COVID-19, the coronavirus, a lot of people in our country are scared. And they're wondering if God is going to do anything. Of course God's going to do something. You know, we just have to wait and be patient and wait for him to see us through, okay? Um, this time he asked God, he asked that if the fleece would be dry and the ground all around the wool would be wet, okay? So the first time it was wet wool, dry ground. The second time it was dry wool, wet ground, okay? So it was the opposite. And the next morning, sure enough, The wool was wet, the ground was dry, okay? And so that was another sign of confirmation that God was with him and that God was going to make everything okay. All right, so then Gideon gathered up an army and started out for the Midianite uh, camp. Gideon was probably feeling pretty good about things. He had lots of men to help him fight and God promised he would help them win. Well, God had a plan, and you know his plans are so far-fetched, but they always work, don't they? But you're not going to know what the plan is until tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so um, stay tuned because we've already gone like 20 minutes into this. So stay tuned for tomorrow, and I might be able to get to the rest of the story. I may have to wait until Monday to go, get to the end, but stay tuned for part two on tomorrow, okay? So I love you, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. Remember, we got a short day today. Shoot, everybody shoot. Ah, okay, so I'll see you in a bit. Love you guys.